In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Sony TUF CF Express Type A cards. Here's the story. Recently in a video I made, I talked about how I really liked in the Sony FX6 that it has dual card slots and you can put two different types of cards into those two slots. You can put CF Express Type A cards and you can put in your regular SD cards that you might have lying around the house. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that it gives the creator flexibility in using different types of media that might be already accessible to them or more affordable. However, for example, these SD cards that I've got here, the V30 UHS-1 cards, they are quite cheap, they are readily available, and you should have no problem getting your hands on them. The problem with that though, is that if you're going to record on the Sony FX6 at 120 frames per second in 4K, these cheaper cards, they're not going to cut it and they're not guaranteed media and you will be lucky to be able to record with them. The camera might not even record or it might start recording and then just cut out. And when you're on set, you don't want your camera to just stop recording because your cards are slow. So the way to get around that is to use a CF Express Type A card, which right now only Sony is producing. And you will know that when you hit record, that whatever you're recording will go onto the cards uh, because it is guaranteed media. When you put any SD card into the Sony FX6, regardless of whether it's a V90 card, like the one that I've got here, or if it's a V30 card, it will say when you turn the camera on, not guaranteed media. And then if you try to record in slow and quick mode, like 120 frames per second, then you hit record and then stop record. And then you might hit record again to get another shot really quickly after stop hitting record. And then your record light will be blinking. And that's the camera trying to buffer the last uh, bit of video that you have recorded uh, and then get ready to record the next lot of video. And the reason that it does this is because the car's just not fast enough to be able to capture all the video uh, in one take and then be ready for you to record another clip. So that is one of the reasons why you would get a Sony TUF CF Express Type A card because the cards are so quick that you don't have to worry about the buffering and completing the clip before going on to your next clip. So if you take lots of little clips here and there and you button on and then button off and then see something else that you want to record really quickly and then button on and then button off again, you might find that you need to wait a few seconds for that clip to clear and be saved onto your memory card. And for some people that can be a bit of a uh, catastrophe depending on what kind of stuff you're recording. So that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the media or the memory cards that you use in your Sony FX6. So right now Sony are the only people that make these CF Express Type A cards and they come in 80 gigabytes and 160 gigabytes. And I got the 160 gigabyte one and it is quite expensive. In Australia, it is $575. The 80 gigabyte card you can pick up as well for 300 Australian dollars. And then after you pick up those cards, you need to be able to read those cards on your computer and dump your files. And you can purchase a Sony CF Express Type A card reader for 220 Australian dollars. So as you can see, it does start to add up quite quickly when you're starting to invest into these CF Express Type A cards. Also, one thing that stopped me from getting this card sooner was the rumors that Prograde are bringing out much cheaper and much more affordable CF Express Type A cards. And currently they are selling a CF Express Type A card reader, but as a recording, I have not seen that they have released any CF Express Type A cards to be able to record onto. And I don't know how much they are going to be priced as well. The rumors are that they are going to be much more affordable, but until they actually are released and seen in the public and you're actually able to purchase them, they're just rumors right now. So who knows, if you wait a little bit longer, the ProGrade cards might come to market and you'll be able to pick those up maybe at a cheaper price. But these rumors were floating around uh, that the cards would be released at the start of May and is now the start of June. So who knows when the cards are actually going to come. So if you do purchase a 160 gigabyte CF Express Type A card, how long can you actually record on your Sony FX6? Well, in 4K 25p, you can get 79 minutes in XAVC-I. In 4K 50p, you get 40 minutes in the same codec. 4K 59.94p, you get 33 minutes. 120 frames per second at 25p, you get 
16 minutes, but there is no autofocus if you are recording in 25p. You need to be recording in 23.98p to be able to get that autofocus. However, if you are like me and you shoot in a PAL territory and you like to stick to 25p, if you record in 100 frames per second, you will get 19 minutes. And if you change it to 23.98p to get 120 frames per second, you will get 16 minutes. All of those in the XAVC-I codec. Now the FX6 does do two types of codecs, the XAVC-I and the XAVC-L. And the XAVC-L is an 8-bit codec, whereas the XAVC-I is 10-bit. So if you're recording S-Log3, it is highly suggested that you do not shoot in XAVC-L. Even though you do get extra time recorded onto your cards, you're sacrificing that 10-bit color space, which you really need when you're grading S-Log3. So if you want to save yourself a headache in the editing suite later, always record XAVC-I on the Sony FX6 when doing S-Log3. But if you're recording in S-Cinetone and you don't really care about that extra color space, then maybe shooting XAVC-L is something that you might be interested in doing. So that is something to consider but it's not necessarily something that I would recommend for most shooters. But if you don't listen to my recommendation and you wanna know how much time you'd have on a 160 gigabyte card, you would get 4K 25p 195 minutes in XAVC-L, 4K 50p 131 minutes, 4K 59.94p 130 minutes, 4K 120 frames per second in 25p 40 minutes, uh, and that's with no autofocus, and then 4K, 100 frames per second, 25p, you will get 48 minutes. So that's a lot of numbers for you to digest. Hopefully that's helpful for you and gives you a little bit of an idea of how much time you would be able to record on a single card that is 160 gigabytes. Obviously, if you got the 80 gigabyte version, you just cut those numbers in half. Now, as I said before, these cards are quite fast and quite expensive, but also one of the good things about the cards being fast is dumping them onto your computer. And I did a few tests. Right now, I am currently editing on a Apple M1 Mac Mini. And when I dump the footage onto the Mac Mini directly, I can get a full card, 160 gig, done in four minutes and 42 seconds. And with my Mac Mini, I also have a hub that gives me extra USB ports and also has a solid state drive in it as well. And if I copy that same card to the SSD drive that's in that hub using the Thunderbolt connection that goes directly into the Mac Mini, that will take me about 14 minutes and 50 seconds. And if you have a similar setup and are wondering what the performance is like using the USB hub, then connected to that with the USB 3, going straight to the Mac Mini, it takes about seven minutes and 50 seconds to get the whole card onto the Mac Mini. And then if I wanted to copy it to the SSD drive from the memory card as well, it takes me 15 minutes and 11 seconds to get the whole memory card full footage onto the external SSD drive as well. So although these cards are really fast, you do need to think about your post workflow and if there are any bottlenecks that might slow down the performance of these cards going directly to your internal hard drive on a computer or if it's going from the memory card to the computer and then through the computer to an external hard drive. That will slow down your performance times, obviously. So that's a lot of numbers and hopefully you found this video helpful and it might give you a little bit more insight into why you would purchase one of these cards. Yes, they are really expensive, but when you do think about it, sometimes paying that little bit extra money, and in this case, a lot more money, uh, it does give you peace of mind when you're walking onto set and you are recording video footage for clients that are paying good money for you to be there. You don't wanna be risking it and thinking, oh, I'll just use this card, it should be all right, because it only takes that one time for it to not be right to really cause a lot of drama. So my recommendation is if you're making money off your camera gear, then it does make a lot of sense for you to spend it on things that you do know will work every time and not run that risk of, mm, it might not be guaranteed media and it should be all right, because it might cause you a lot of headaches in the future. However, if you're a hobbyist and it doesn't really matter, then sure, go for the cheaper SD cards. And if you don't shoot in slow motion that much, you probably won't even really miss it. But for me, I know that if I'm going on to set, I don't wanna be restricted to certain frame rates and certain uh, formats as well. I wanna be able to record whatever I need to at whatever time. And it, for me, it just makes sense to use these cards. 
And hopefully in the future, there will be some extra cards that come out by people like ProGrade that are a bit more affordable than the current Sony offerings. And if they do come out, it will be interesting to see how reliable they are and how they stack up against these Sony Tough cards. And that's the video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on content creation in the future.